what is this, the 17th? Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ken Foreman. I'm uh, chair, current chair of the zoning board. Uh, we're going to open uh, the meeting because we advertised that we would open at 6, but we're missing a couple of uh, board members, and at least one we know is imminently arriving. So we're going to take a two minute or three minute recess until he appears. We can go back to <laughs> Twittering. Hopefully, you're not. Uh, again, um, uh, let me first uh, begin by asking everyone to silence your cell phone uh, if you haven't already done that. And uh, then also by introducing the board. So from your left, uh, Jerry Potamus, who's an associate member of the board, T.J. Curry, who's vice chair of the board, Kim <coughs> Beelan, who's clerk of the board, uh, Paul Murphy, voting member, Robert Dugan, who is an associate associate member? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, and then Sari Boudreau, who I'm sure most of you know, is our zoning administrator, and Draw Day Geishecker will be the recording secretary tonight. Um, so the you know the zoning board is is charged with applying the zoning bylaws of the town uh, and considering requests for special permits, for variances and appeals. And tonight we're also going to hear a comprehensive permit application or, or 40B application uh, as provided by our bylaws that have been approved by a town meeting and the Attorney General's office for the Commonwealth. And the decisions are made through this public hearing process. Uh, our goal, of course, is to hear full and fair, uh, to hear uh, testimony from the applicants and the public and allow full and fair consideration of the project. Uh, to begin each hearing, we'll ask uh, Kim, the clerk, to uh, read a <coughs> public announcement of the hearing uh, and present any pertinent information from the file, such as appeals, uh, such as, I'm sorry, uh, uh, referrals from town departments and, and uh, summarized correspondence. And then we will grant the applicant's representative 15 minutes to present. Uh, that time can be extended by the board, so if more time is needed, just ask. Uh, and the board uh, will then question the applicant, and then we will uh, invite the public to comment. Uh, and you can either ask a question or uh, say you're in favor or opposed. If you do wish to speak, wait to be recognized, please, by, by the chair. Go to the podium and clearly state your name uh, for the record, so our recording secretary can get that down. Uh, and uh, please just uh, direct your comments to the project. No, you know, negative remarks about, uh, uh, you know, their personal remarks or that kind of thing. Um, if we feel we've got enough information, we will vote to close the hearing, uh, after which we can't take any further testimony. Uh, if we feel we would like more information, we can vote to continue to a date certain in the future. And then uh, once the hearing is closed, we can have board discussion and, and uh, uh, make a, a motion to either approve or deny with conditions and so forth. Um, so as I said, tonight we have uh, a hearing uh, for a comprehensive permit, 057-17, uh, and a continuation. And we're going to start uh, with uh, the uh, the, the new hearing for uh, North Star Place and Kim, I'll <coughs> go to you. How long was Ed supposed to be? He said, I he, just, he said he'd be here any minute. I just would you like to wait? Because once we open I the would. public hearing, then he can't, mm -hmm. because we don't have Unless, the Mullen roll. So once he's not here, he is here. Okay, great. So we'll just hold our right breath now. for a minute. 
Does town hall extend to the parking lot? Hmm. <laughs> Want to go out and charge a fee? No, you've already. Oh, for the forty B. Yeah. Probably should. Sorry, Jeff. So, and we'll take you up at six thirty. So our, our, our plan will be to proceed with the North Star uh, presentation and hearing and then suspend that temporarily at 6.30 because we've advertised for this continuation to, to be at 6.30 and then we'll, once we've dealt with that we'll resume. I'll have to make a <laughs> yeah, Chairman, I'm gonna have to make a public disclosure at the beginning of which? Of the non star. Okay. Okay. But I'm gonna be leaving anyway, so you'd be wise to appoint drivers. Oh yeah, if you don't need one. Okay. All right. And this is Ed Van Curran, our other voting member. Just okay, so now Okay. So Let's get started. Being all persons deemed affected by the Board of Appeals under Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws, you are hereby notified that North Star Place LLC of East Falmouth, Massachusetts, applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a comprehensive permit pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40B, Sections 20 to 23, and 760 CMR 56 to construct 20 dwelling units in 10 buildings, of which five units will be affordable on subject property known as Zero Brick Kiln Road, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, and referrals. Um, so there was a, a referral meeting, sorry, that you'd like you always to for yes, uh -huh. 40B? The, the minutes are in there. Um, and the minutes are in the file. There was correspondence from the Cape Cod Commission, which I'll just go to the, um, I guess, concluding paragraph, which says, the Commission is directed under the Commission Act to promote and support efforts to address the affordable housing needs of Cape Cod residents. This project is consistent with that stated purpose. There is a pretty lengthy memo from the Department of Public Works, um, just overall comments. That were reviewed at that meeting. Um, so they were reviewed at the meetings re reference, of which we have minutes. Um, comments about sewage, water, parking and access, grading and drainage. Um, and just some, some general comments as well. And there's also a letter from the Falmouth Fire Department dated July 27, 2017. Dear Board, this correspondence concerns appeal number 5717, the proposed affordable development project on Brick Kiln Road from applicant North Star Place, LLC. The Falmouth Fire Rescue Department is requesting Cape Cod Berm around the interior of the cul-de-sac to facilitate access for emergency apparatus. Um, please feel free to contact me with any questions. And we had one letter with comments and concerns. And that is it. Okay. And Mr. for the applicant, it looks like we have Steve McKenzie. And if you oh, had a comment, you Yes, want? I'd like to disclose to the board that North Star built my home uh, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, uh, since then, I probably have not any financial dealings with Moscow <coughs> for at least five to six years. Uh, and I think I can be fair and objective, and I'll be leaving anyway, so. Okay. Yeah, the record will show that you're not a voting member. Okay. So. Yeah, and I Robert? Do, yeah, just to disclose, um, just through my profession, I've sold properties in the surrounding neighborhoods, uh, but it won't have any bearing on the hearing. Okay. Anybody have any objection based on those? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members, Ms. Pedro. My name is Stephen McKenzie, and I represent North Star Place LLC, uh, who is the applicant uh, under this comprehensive permit. With us tonight is John DeSango, who's in the flat shed in the back, and Dana Wessel, who are the managers of North Star Place. Uh, in addition, Mike Boselli, who's the principal of Falmouth Engineering, is here. And Mike will be happy to answer any engineering type questions that you might have with us tonight. Uh, North Star Place has received a site approval or project eligibility letter for this 20 unit development from Mass Housing. Following that, uh, we had a, excuse me, prior to receiving that, we had a site visit with uh, Brian Curry, 
the town planner, Corey Pacheco, the assistant planner, and Mike Busby from Mass Housing, along with John and Dana and myself. Uh, it was indicated at that time by the planner that the selectmen had no issues with this particular development, thought it was well designed and, and were, were in fact in favor of the development. In addition, there was recently held a meeting by the zoning administrator with myself and my clients and Mike Maselli, as well as uh, various members of different boards in the town, which is the minutes that you have copies of. Uh, North Star has now followed up from that and applied to you for a comprehensive permit under Chapter 40B. North Star Place is under a purchase and sale agreement with the current owner, uh, which is a trust, and therefore we have the requisite site control of the property in order to come before you. The property is shown on a plan of land entitled uh, Plan of Lot 123, Brick Hill Road for North Star Construction by, by Falmouth Engineering. It's a 3.65 acre piece of property in an agricultural B zoning district. The applicant seeks to construct 20 units contained in 10 duplex buildings. They're all ranch style, so it's designed to seamlessly fit into the neighborhood and not be visible from the street. The closest unit is uh, 250 feet back from the street. Um, you can see it's access to a common driveway that will come in. This is the closest unit, and that's a full 250 feet back from the street. The development, uh, is a rental development, so even though 25% of the units are proposed as affordable, under Chapter 40B, all 20 units will count towards the town subsidized housing inventory because it's a rental development, which is important to know. So 16 of the units are two-bedroom units, and three of the units will be four-bedroom units. Uh, this was carefully designed to sort of fit in, have large rear setbacks to be away from the abutting two neighborhoods. And speaking of the two neighborhoods, my clients, both Dana and John, are local guys. They've been building in this town for 20 some odd years, actually over 30 years. Dana lives in the Jamie Lane development, which is just to the west here. And John lives also in a development off of Brick Hill Road, which is the Kerrywood Estates development. So they're local guys. They've, they've decided they wanted to do a rental development and put this right in their own backyard. So they're not out of town as coming in here. This is something that's important to them and it's important for everybody to know that they are local to this development. Um, the density is designed at less than 5.5 units per acre. It's 20 units on 3.65 acres. Had this been in a zoning district that allowed multifamily housing by special permit, we could have gone to six units. So we didn't try to overbuild the development, we actually kept it down. Um, the five of the units are designated permanently as affordable, and they're shown on the plans. Uh, there's a note on the plan that shows where they are, and they're units A, E, T, I, so four of the units are two bedroom units that are permanently designated as affordable and one of the units is a three bedroom. Uh, for lot coverage, the lot coverage is only a total of 9.9% by structures and structures paving and parking is 29%, both of which are considerably below the town's allowable lot coverage structures. As I say, the, this has been carefully designed as a ranch style, so it's not visible. It won't really be too visible from the neighbors. There's going to be landscape buffers on all surrounding the property, whether it's natural vegetation or areas that will have fencing in to separate it from the abutting neighbors. Um, we set them so far back so that rather than having one separate play area on the property, everybody will have a large backyard. The closest house is 36 feet set back. And so that gives, that's almost four, three and a half times, four times what the town would require. So this allows everybody, every unit tenant, to have a backyard area for entertaining and for a play area, rather than having one common area, which would be behind one of his house. Uh, the, the lighting design, there are, there's going to be post lamps placed along the driveway coming in, as well as in front of each unit, there'll be an eight foot post lamp to shed light onto each of the units. Um, there was a question about mail delivery. We met with the East Falmouth Postmaster, and what there's going to be is there's a, in front of each unit, there'll be a duplex mailbox, and they're actually going to come and deliver mail within the development and the drive out. There's a dumpster. Actually, we have two dumpster locations, one here and one here. And there's been some question about whether or not we could get by with just one, and if the board feels this is only 20 units, um, that we could eliminate one of those. As far as parking, the code requires us to have 40 parking spaces, two for each unit. So we have provided those 40. In addition to that, we have seven guest parking spaces up in this area and three more back along the cul-de-sac. So there's a total of 50 spaces on the property. 
Um, as far as traffic and generation from this development, the Institute of Transportation Engineers trip generation mineral says 3.34 units per day for an apartment as such as this. So the total trip generation is less than 67 trips a day. No. Um, I think that's a brief overview. Of what the if you have a question, up. you'll have an opportunity later to ask, please. Okay. Michael, do you want to have Michael go through the engineering? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, does Michael have some comments on the engineering? He does. Plan? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Members of the board, my name is Michael Borsell of <coughs> Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. <coughs> We designed the layout of the uh, roadway, the drainage system, the septic system, and the underground water system. Um, we designed it all in accordance with standard practices and in accordance with the Town of Falmouth uh, uh, subdivision regulations as a guide, the Falmouth uh, Engineering uh, Department of the Department of Public Works, um, Board of Health Title V, and Falmouth Health regulations. Um, there was a memo from um, uh, Assistant Town Engineer uh, Scott Schluter, and uh, that stated uh, August 7th, uh, 2017, uh, at the, uh, at the uh, referral meeting, we went over this list with Scott. Uh, and uh, then we received it a documented hard copy, formal hard copy, and went through the list. In fact, we've addressed and made revisions to the plans that address every, every item on here. Uh, you don't have those plans in your file yet because it's so fresh, and we expect that there'd be other comments from you or maybe other referrals. We also um, received comments from uh, a referral from the health department, uh, all of which are addressed in the revised plans. Unless you want me to go through each point by point in the four-page memo, um, I will do that if you'd like. But Why don't we see if, the, I, I think the board's had an opportunity to look at the memo if there's questions, specific questions. Some of, some of the like high points of the memo were um, to make the plans consistent with the landscape plan. There was a disconnect in some of the elements of the layout on the engineering plan. Uh, the landscape plan was done independent from another firm. So, for instance, the landscape plan shows a large paved area for guest parking that sort of encroaches into the lawn area. That'll be the surface where the uh, septic system is. We changed that and configured the parking so that they're along the driveway. Um, just standard parking spaces that meet the town bylaw standard at um, section 109 for the dimensional requirements. And there's um, seven guest parking spaces here, and there's an additional three. The parking demand is 40. There's actually 50 spaces on the site. Each unit gets two spaces, um, and they're separated by a landscape island. There's a sidewalk at the entrance of each unit. Each island will have a, a double uh, mail delivery box. Mail delivery will be to the site instead of having a cluster, uh, a ganged array in another location. Um, there's a proposed water main that will connect from brick kiln, standard eight inch diameter water main with a hydrant, all in accordance with the Tana Falmouth Water Department standards. Uh, the drainage on the site has been designed in accordance with the Falmouth subdivision standards and, and includes catch basins that are at um, strategic low points on the driveway that will then pipe to um, subsurface leaching pits. And in some areas we're proposing to uh, supplement that drainage for extreme storm events that the lawn area have a gradual uh, depression, not um, not to be characterized as a ditch. There'll be 
a very shallow low point in the lawn area, and it's and it's designed to be fairly uh, unassuming, and it can still be utilized as a grass area for outside activities. Um, but it'll also be like surplus um, drainage capacity in the event uh, we have some significant storms. The septic system is a common septic system. It's shown on the plan here in red. There's a piping system. Each unit will pipe to a common collector pipe. It'll go into a, uh, a series of pump uh, tanks in a pump chamber. This is all um, pressure distribution system designed in accordance with the Title V standards. The total daily flow from this is just under 5,000 gallons per day, which is well below standards that might trigger a groundwater discharge permit, which is a 10,000 gallon per day trigger. It's designed to not be a mound. There's no evidence at the surface that there's anything there. It'll be basically a flat open grass area. You could, it could be a play field, it could be playground, it can be, in fact, there's some pavement over it. Um, so it'll be unassuming. It won't, no one will be able to say there's the septic system. Um, there are some trash receptacles scattered through, strategically located. They would be um, fenced in to screen them with uh, more than likely uh, wood stockade fencing. And they're in places where a standard trash truck can easily gain access to them. There's one here and there's one up here. There's a cul-de-sac which meets the standards for turning. We did make sure that the internal curbing was uh, Cape Cod berm. As, as suggested or recommended by the fire department. The site is pretty flat. We are uh, very cognizant of uh, trying to preserve trees. So there's, uh, it's fully wooded if you've attempted to walk through there. There are some stakes out there if anyone attempted <laughs> to go out. Um, the entrance and some of the stakes on the first two units in the property line nearby. but. The landscape plan shows that there's an intention of buffering the perimeter either with introducing new planting or trying to preserve as many trees as possible, keeping in mind that there'd be some small outside yard areas, but the applicant's very motivated to retain trees and um, um, be respectful of privacy and screening of abutting properties because these folks would like to also have buffers and privacy. So I think that sums it up. Um, we intend to submit revised plans after we hear all, the, all your input and try to work through Siri with Scott Schluter to make sure we've set aside Scott as well as the health department. And I'm okay. happy to Why answer questions. Why don't we see if uh, <coughs> there's board questions in the next five, four minutes. Uh, Robert, you want to start? Uh, just a question on, on the original plan. It showed there was a lot of encroaching structures on this, the property. How, how are the handling? Uh, uh, assuming that we receive our permit, we'll be sending letters to each of the encroachers asking them to remove the encroachments. There's some sheds, a chicken coop, I think some playground equipment, things like that, that encroach over. And the, um, and the the original playground that was proposed before, is that is that just been removed in general? Or you yeah, we removed it because it, we felt like rather than creating one playground right behind one of the abutters so that everybody would congregate there, there was such a large real setback that each tenant could have their own backyard for entertainment and recreation. That's all I have. Yeah, I don't have any, Ken. Uh, I just have one question. Uh, has anybody, the dumpster people, have they looked at this to see, can they really get in and get at those dumpsters? We haven't had anybody look at it, but Mike's very experienced at designing these uh, right. so that... I can add something too to that. Uh, <coughs> Ed, the plan you have is probably slightly different than this. I'd like to just point out you haven't received the revised plan. We've reoriented the dumpsters so that they're aimed at the road so that the truck, it's going to be okay. one of those trucks that throws yeah. it up over. 
It and didn't look can, like the original drawings. Yes. That. Yeah, okay. All right, yes. as long as you took care of it. That's all I had. Kim? I probably will take more than two minutes. Would you like to? Uh, Maybe, yeah, yeah, go skip me and then we'll. Let's give Jerry a chance. I have a quick one so that it appears that you may have addressed the concern of one of the people on one of the property owners on Jamie Lane that was concerned about a playground within three feet or uh, very close to that property. Exactly. So that was on a previous. And it, where is that on the plan? Is that where the pink area is? Or? No, that's the south. It was originally in this area up here, Jerry, off the end of the cul-de-sac. So oh. it would have been directly behind these property owners. So there's no plan playground, central plan playground? No central playground. As I said, the, the closest setback is 36 feet, so it's three and a half times what town requires, and that gives everybody an ample background. Some of them are as much as 65 feet. No speaking, of, speaking of the plan, too, I know that somebody had a question. There's a 10 foot right of way shown here. That's not on this property. That's actually burdens each of the lots on this side of Cheney Lane. And what I'm informed is that this is over 100 years old, and this provided some secondary access out to, say, the Tanglewood development. But it has nothing to do with this particular piece. It's actually on the back end of each one of the lots on this side of Jamie Lane. Okay. No further question. All right. TJ, do you want to go now or do you want to wait? I could fire off a quick question. Fire off a quick question. All right. Uh, I was reviewing uh, Clipper Landscapes, uh, I guess it was the landscape plan for it, and I noted that uh, there was existing natural vegetation to be kept uh, probably to the north and to the east, uh, as well as I think it was the six foot fence to the west. Uh, were there any revisions made at all? They, plan? they have not made their revisions yet uh, to this to change for the packing and the other things out. But as Mike said, it's, my clients are very cognizant about keeping as many trees as possible, buffering the neighbors' properties, and providing a buffer for the folks who are going to live here. Thank you. Okay, there was one other uh, one we could ask in 30 seconds. Th that there was a driveway encroachment issue raised by engineering uh, for 127, was it Brick Hill? Uh, how did you address this that? property right here? Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the comments by Mr. Schluter, and, and subsequent to that staff meeting, we went out and survey located this driveway, which is on this plan, but not on the plan you have. Um, and we, we determined that the driveway edge and rounding of that driveway rounds out and back onto the edge of Brick Hill Road. And it, cro it crosses across an extension of the common boundary, but that's not an issue. Um, our new driveway and our turning radius that meets the town standards will uh, easily blend to that, and they will create um, what I call a bull nose, uh, so that there's no impact on their use of their driveway or our access in, into or out of our um, development. They can mutually exist with no issues at all. I haven't reviewed that with Mr. Schlotter, but that's my opinion and I'm, I'm confident in that. There was a question about an existing hydrant here. All right, um, well, let's not deal with yeah. that. I just wanted the driveway. Because we're now at 630, so I guess we need to continue, uh, this, until continue this for later in the meeting. If I could have a motion. I'll move to continue the hearing on application. <coughs> 5717 until after our next hearing, later this, this evening. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded by Kim and Ed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so then that leads us to continuation of 048-17, uh, 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 Lookner, 15 Pennsylvania Avenue. Can you go yes. through the voting members, please? Uh, voting members are... Uh, myself, Kim Bielan, TJ, Evan Curran, and uh, Jerry Tamas. And I'll just um, summarize that there was correspondence received from the applicant um, August 10th, 2017, August 16th, 2017, concerning um, the bulk calculations that we had requested. Okay. All right. 
Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Jeff Nickerson. I'm a lawyer here in town with the firm of Offenheim and Nickerson. Uh, our, office, our office represents Lorraine Luckner, who's the owner of the property, who is here this evening. Uh, you'll remember from the last hearing that the applicant is seeking permission from the zoning board to raise and reconstruct the pre-existing non-conforming dwelling at 15 <coughs> uh, As the board is aware, the board may allow this if the application proves that the proposed reconstruction is not substantially more detrimental than the existing structure. It's our strong belief that that's the case and that the board should issue the special permit. Uh, with the board's permission, uh, at the last hearing I gave testimony as to the criteria under 240-3 and 242-16, uh, and at the risk of being redundant, I'd prefer not to rehash all that unless you would ask me to. I certainly can. No, don't rehash. Thank you. So the board at the last hearing sought additional analysis as to how the proposed project compared to property in the neighborhood. Uh, as Ms. Bielan mentioned, I submitted a revised uh, zoning chart yesterday. I don't know if all the members have a copy of that zoning chart. I have it if it's yes, they do. useful. Okay. Uh, I'd also, for context, like to provide the members with uh, a photograph that I took of the property and some surrounding property. So that photo is only as to context. I was just coming out of the Heights parking lot one day. I looked left to see what was going on, and I saw the structure in question and the structures nearby. And I thought it would be helpful to the board to see the height of the nearby structures. I'll get into more about that a little bit later. So the revised chart takes into account several factors, including the approximate building lot coverage, habitable square feet of space, and the building footprint. The board questioned at the last hearing whether it's appropriate to consider commercial structures. We have several commercial structures in the area. There are a couple of inns. I believe there are three inns. It's also the British Beer Company. And there's the In Seasons Resort, which is a timeshare uh, fronting on Worcester Court. Our zoning bylaw doesn't define the term neighborhood. So I went to the dictionary. Black's Law Dictionary defines a neighborhood as, quote, the immediate vicinity, the area near or next to the specified place. I would suggest to the board that it's appropriate to consider those commercial structures because it's part of the neighborhood. When you walk around the neighborhood, you can't help but walk by the commercial structures. Uh, that said, I'm going to provide analysis both as to commercial and exclusively as to res residential because I know some board members were interested in that. So of all the structures in the neighborhood, commercial and residential, the average square footage of habitable space is 4,247 square feet. Proposed uh, reconstruction of 15 Pennsylvania will have 3,375 square feet, well below the average. Of the 14 residential structures that are on the chart, the existing 15 Pennsylvania is the fourth largest residence. When it's rebuilt, it's still going to be the fourth largest residence. It's not going to balloon up uh, from a ranch to a two and a half story dwelling. As to lot coverage, the lot coverage of all the buildings in the neighborhood is 29.12%. As proposed, rebuilt Pennsylvania will have 26.24% of the lot covered by the dwelling and the garage. Of the 14 residential structures that are on the chart, there are five properties in the neighborhood with higher lot coverages by buildings than the existing 15 Pennsylvania. By buildings, I mean dwelling, because that's exclusively a residential analysis. When rebuilt, there are going to remain five dwellings in the neighborhood with a higher percentage lot coverage than 15 Pennsylvania. Again, we're not going up and leapfrogging over any of our neighbors. Based both on habitable space and lot coverage by the buildings, the proposed reconstruction will not result in a structure which surpasses any of the other dwellings which have more habitable space or greater lot coverage than 15 Pennsylvania as it sits today. I would also note that the lot coverage at 15 Pennsylvania by the dwelling and garage is currently at 27.72%. That's going to go down to 26.24% as proposed. So it is a reduction as to the uh, portion of the lot uh, where, the where the dwelling and the garage sits. Uh, if I may, I'd like to talk briefly about the design of 15 Pennsylvania. Um, as we discussed a little bit at the last hearing, the first floor is at elevation 17, which is seven feet above existing grade. 
The reason for that is we have found with wetland regulations to deal with and we have uh, federal flood standards that we have to address. As part of that, the, the mechanicals for the building have to be out of the flood zone. The mechanicals are designed in this structure to be in the attic space above the second floor, which is adjacent to the viewing area. Uh, if you see uh, architectural drawing sheet A5, you can see that from the north, this looks like a two-story dwelling. There's no dormer out the back of the structure. That was designed purposefully so that it would look like a two-story dwelling from the north. If you see architectural sheet A4, you can see the size of the dormer that allows the viewing area <coughs> on that second and a half floor. Uh, the observatory area is 234 square feet approximately of space, and the deck is about 140 square feet of space. The plan was developed by the homeowner, the builder, and the architect based on other dwellings in the area and based on the flood standards that they have to meet. Um, I submitted uh, yet earlier on last week an analysis about uh, other dwellings in the area which the zoning board has allowed to be raised and reconstructed. I can provide that for you again in just a second. Now I know that your past decisions aren't binding precedent, but I did this analysis because I wanted to take a look and see what other homeowners in this neighborhood were able to do with their homes based on what they asked the zoning board for relief for. And what I found was interesting. So of the six houses that are in the Heights, I also found one in Mara Vista. I was just driving down. I noticed it was a larger house, so I took a look, and it was also a special permit. But of the six houses in the Heights, which were raised and reconstructed, uh, I'm sorry, there were seven in the Heights raised and reconstructed. Six of the seven were reconstructed with two and a half stories. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we have someone speaking, please. If you want to talk, you can leave the room and talk. Otherwise, please uh, don't talk. Go ahead. Sorry. So uh, of the seven that were allowed to be raised and reconstructed, six were allowed to be two and a half stories in height. Further, uh, of those heights which were allowed to be reconstructed, uh, the average lot coverage by dwelling permitted by the zoning board was 29.55%. We're requesting 26.24% as reconstructed to be covered by the dwelling and the garage. I hope this information has demonstrated to the board that the proposed reconstruction is consistent with existing dwellings in the neighborhoods, both as reconstructed and those that might be pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, I urge the board to also consider the fact that the neighborhood should include the commercial structures. Uh, you know, in a traditional definition of neighborhood, your neighborhood doesn't end just because your zoning district changes. Your neighborhood is what's near your house. Uh, if the board has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, and if I'm unable to answer any questions tonight, uh, happy to try to do so uh, subsequently if a continuation okay. is allowed. See if anyone, based on this new information, has any additional questions. Okay. I have none. I don't either. Uh, well, actually, I have one question, I'll ask, but I'm sure you don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, well, if you don't know how high <laughs> 16 Massachusetts is, do you? I don't know. I walked over there. It's not insubstantial. Uh, they got some nice decks up, decks up on that second and a half story there. Um, it's a big building. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've, we've heard, I think, a pretty good answer to our question. 
Uh, do we now feel we have adequate information? I do. I do. Should we have some discussion before we close it sure. in case Absolutely. something else comes up? Sure. Uh, Anybody want to make any comments? I'll comment. So I appreciate all of the information. I think it's certainly helpful. Um, with that said, I also want to note, I do think that the neighborhood does include both the commercial and the non-commercial. Um, so it doesn't stop where the, the property line is. With that being said, um, I still just can't, I, and I think I've been pretty consistent in terms of building on that third story, which I know is two and a half stories. I voted against 16 Nantucket, which is pointed out in this picture. I think this picture, in my opinion, shows that, I mean, you look at 16 Pennsylvania, which is right across the street, and that's 13% lot coverage, and it's two stories. So I think the structure compared to that um, is a, a change. And so I, I, in my opinion, I think it's substantially more detrimental. Knowing how this board tends to approach these, I would say I think people will probably vote in favor of it, but I um, just have been, I think, consistent with terms of dormering that, that third story and how I think it's kind of over-maximizing, especially when you do have to go up. So I will be consistent with how I approach these, so. Okay. So we know how Kim feels. Yes. Uh, I've walked around the neighborhood. Well, I'm not too far away. I, I, I sort of think it blends in. The uh, fact that I didn't even know uh, on 16, I just try to do the visual characterization. And the, I think the applicant submits some other pictures. And uh, to, uh, I think it's pretty consistent. I think the house looks pretty good. Uh, before we close the hearing, it would be nice to know if this is, if we're going to require any reduction in height or anything to reduce the bulk. I mean, per Kim's concern. It takes four to pass, right? Right, right. Well, let's see, uh, let's sort of take a consensus here. TJ? Well, I definitely appreciate all the effort that the applicant went to to provide us with the revised law coverage and I was around the neighborhood this afternoon and this is pretty much the same exact view I had when I was walking around. So do have a good feeling on the heights of the surrounding uh, houses in the neighborhood. Uh, with all that being said, I, I am in favor of the project. Okay. Ed? Yeah, I'm in favor of the project. Okay. And uh, let's see. Robert, you're free to opine. Well, I, I know the neighborhood uh, pretty well, but um, I'm a little more inclined to what, what Kim's saying. I, I just think there's a changeover going in the whole area, and I'd like to, I would like to see the height taken down a little bit to reduce the bulk. Okay, but let's just see. Are you, you're just not a Jerry, voting yeah. He's not a voting member. I'm not a voting member, member so right. it's just an opinion. So, Jerry, from, uh, so in terms of my view, I think we do have a tough balancing act in this, these areas where the structures must be elevated to accommodate the flood plain issues. I think Jeff gave us a pretty good rundown, but I guess I think for me the most compelling thing is that the rank of this structure doesn't change <coughs> in terms of its the, the bulk calculations uh, and you know I think you can look at that dormer and come either think it's gratuitous or you can think it's a nice architectural uh, addition that does make it fit into the heights that we need perspective. On balance, I, I think I'm in favor of this one. So, there's, I think there's a consensus to go forward with it. If, uh, Motion to close the hearing then? Sure. I mean, that's, that's the next step, right? That's the next step. Motion to close the hearing? Second. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we need a motion with respect to the project. Either in favor or opposed. Motion to approve. Okay. I know like, what next question you're going to ask me. So. <laughs> <laughs> second. 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 Okay. So moved and seconded by Jerry and Ed. Uh, and some findings then. Find it's consistent with uh, 24069E. I think it's not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Uh, I don't think we had come up with any landscaping or other issues in previous meetings. No, I uh, think in terms of findings, we want to say how does it compare to, to the other. What what is the data that Jeff has given us show about how it's Oh, I think at the bottom of his uh, <coughs> analysis that came in today, yeah, the ranking yeah. does not change. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, the, the square footage of the lot actually. I mean, of the house actually shrunk a little bit, uh, even though the total living area increased. So I, I think I'm rambling. Lot, that. lot coverage. Okay. Went down, right? uh, but in terms of uh, rank, I think the testimony was that it was the fourth well, largest then. in terms of bulk and remains that. Uh, yes, it's also on the back. And I think we could also make a finding that they, they have to elevate due to floodplain consideration. Yes. Any other? It's adequate wastewater disposal? Well, no, not that it came up. Is it, yeah. Is this on the sewer? Do you know? No. No, no it's not. Okay. Well, Board of Health, you know, but that's still adequate. Yeah. Unless health. you're in favor of more sewage. Board of Health did weigh in. You reviewed it last time. <coughs> um, okay, so then, Sheree, any other comments? Uh, 242.16. Not substantially more detrimental, right? That's 240-3. 240.16, 242.16 is adequacy of everything, you know, that it, the proposed meets the is adequate, the size is adequate, the whole bit, the sewage, the traffic, the driveway. Oh, oh, yeah. So I'll address those as how they appear, the adequacy that it's. I think some of the setbacks are improved. The right. side yard setback is improved. That'll be listed. Um, no new nonconformities. That'll be listed. It's and uh, what I usually do on Even though morning. they are elevating it, uh, the height compared to existing building, it's within. And the height, is, the height is compliant, right. So that's probably the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so conditions? According to plans. As per plan, and uh, Nothing has to be submitted that's revised, right? Or is that from what I understand? I would suggest that the board would request an as-built, mm -hmm. because you're raising and reconstructing something that's 10.8 feet. That's okay, existing, no, I, I, and I they're going to reconstruct it the same, so. Yep. <coughs> and they all yeah. Right. Yeah. They'll be required <laughs> so they can submit So they can submit that as well. The yellow, that, that would be the base wall, right? It would be the total height. Yes. Okay, that's for the insurance or FEMA. So, is that that's an as-built? Yeah. That's fine. That's probably. Yeah. And a copy a of the... Idea. Height certification. Yes. And the bedroom count is four. The remaining four. The remaining four. So. so when we four. say height, we mean total height or the flood elevation certificate. You I think we're concerned about the total height. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure because we started right. off at yeah. yeah. And I always ask for things like this, especially <clears throat> when there's a lot coverage that. It's an as-built post-construction with all appurtenances attached, decks, everything. And it'll verify the lot coverage as well. Correct? Yeah, no, I think it's just. Is that okay? Yeah, appropriate. 
Okay. Uh, anybody have any other conditions? No. Right. Hearing no other conditions, then uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Aye. And I'm in favor, so the vote is four to, four to one in favor. Uh, and we can go forward. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to excuse myself. Okay. You're excused. And I'll, and I'll see you next week. And continue your learning process. <laughs> All right, so now I think we need uh, a vote to reopen. Do we need a vote to reopen? Yes, you continued it, so you'll just reopen it. Okay, so we'll reopen the hearing, yeah. Hearing 57 17. Scared me, Paul. She's facing her face out there. Yeah. Cancel that part. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. TJ was. Do you have any additional questions? You did. Oh, you did. Oh, All right. So we're reopening uh, 57 17 North Star. Uh, and the next uh, board member who has questions is Kim Deal. Okay. So some of this might be in the materials, and I apologize if it's duplicate up. So waivers that you're requesting, I saw a number of dwelling units and then dwelling units per acre. Are there any other waivers? Uh, one additional one. From the zoning bylaws, that's the only waiver we asked for was the waiver of being able to build multifamily in this district, which doesn't allow that. But late this afternoon, um, the Board of Health sent an email referral, or almost a referral, to the zoning administrator's office, and they were kind enough to notify us. So I, I have an additional waiver that I'd like to file tonight. Okay. And with that latest waiver, as I said, that come at the, came at the very end of the day, but I did have an opportunity to prepare that before the meeting, is they want a, an annual certificate uh, showing what the occupancy is out there. And we think that that's unnecessary. Uh, we have a management company and a monitoring agent um, that will handle all that stuff anyway. So this is an additional burden to provide an annual certification as to who, what tenants and everything else are in there. It's a registration where right. each unit has to get a permit every year because it's a rental. If you read 241.72.1 of the town code, um, the Board of Health requires, and this is to verify occupancy, but each unit has to apply and pay for a permit so because the it's a owner, rental. The property owner or the rent? The Ten, I believe it's possibly the property owner. In this case, it would be North Star would, Place LLC. Would yeah, have right. to do this. And it's not. It's not. You know, this bylaw was made up well, not too long ago for all, because of all the rental properties in the town, and they want to make sure they're okay and not being uh, rented improperly <coughs> and not according to code. And so they implemented this, and it was primarily for seasonal rentals, but it has become a part of the town code for any rental and it's never property. been applied to a party so, B before I was just going to ask that because we've had several rentals yes. um, some larger rentals right. where and this wasn't the Board of Health did not weigh in on those if they do if they do now I would ask the uh, developer to come in and ask for a modification to accept that waiver because these you usually condition as year-round rentals mm -hmm. They're not seasonal, and you make a condition on that as well, always. <coughs> so I just think it's an added burden to a 40B project. So I guess that leads nicely into mm -hmm. a next question, which is year-round rentals? Yes, year-round okay. rentals. So no seasonal? No rentals. seasonal. OK. Is there a minimum rental term that you're thinking? We're thinking a year. Um, see you answer. That would be happy to a condition if you want to impose something a shorter period we'd be happy to have that too but our plan is year-round year rentals with year-round leases. Okay I think we, we like a year. Do year. Okay yes. Definitely. Um <coughs> all right play area two so I know you said that there's two dumpsters proposed there's one in the front 
there's a dumpster located right here. Yeah. And then there's one back on the public side. Okay. But that, that's just more of a convenience so that there's ample space available, and also so the people that are down here don't have to walk. Right. Up here. Is there any screening in front of the Yes, they're the all, these are all fenced. They're fenced around. In the front as well? In the front, so, so in the that front when as well. There'd be two in. gates that open up and then they pick them up. Okay. And how often do you think those would have to be emptied? I guess probably on a weekly basis. Okay. Um, any concerns raised um, during your course or review of this regarding the intersection with Homestead Lane and Brick Kiln? That's kind of right there. Were there any concerns raised by engineering? No. Sure. In the referral from the uh, engineering department, they asked us to survey locate these entrances um, and then to provide them with what they call a site distance triangle. Um, we're, we will be providing that to them. We've, we've done a review of the site distances in both directions and it's adequate and the intersection distances are adequate for is, you know, issues related to like safety. Okay. So uh, one of the elements I have not submitted yet is this uh, concept of site triangle which shows it's a graphic that demonstrates that this adequate distance if you were at the entrance and wanting to either make a left turning movement or a right turning movement that you can see for far enough down the road in both directions to safely either enter or exit okay while you're up there mike i'll just ask you as well so this is considered your driveway then that's entering the site this is a driveway. In fact, the DPW was explicit in the referral wanting it to be a driveway, and they actually asked us to put a note on the plan so that there's no responsibility for things like snow removal and maintenance. We have put a, again, the revised plan that you haven't seen right. yet has a note on it that says that. Okay. And then <coughs> in terms of distance between, I know you explained it, the, the drive that's kind of right I guess to the west right there. Mm -hmm. Is there any requirement or anything that you're aware of where those would have to be spaced out more significantly? Is there's there no known, there's no dimensional requirement I'm aware of as okay. far as a regulation. Okay. All right. What we're trying to do is uh, we, have, we have limited frontage. If forced to shift it, we would be able to at the cost of having to relocate a hydrant that exists today, which would be a significant expense. I, I, have, I am of the opinion, based on my experience, that there's no issues with uh, any conflicts on that driveway. So I guess that leads to the question. So in the engineering referral, it did talk about, I think, moving the driveway to the southeast. As, an, as a potential option. Yes, and that's something you wouldn't recommend or think Well. Of. No, because of the, and if you re further read yeah. it, he, he s alludes to the fact that there's a hydrant there, and he, he kind of said you're, in a, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place in a nice way, and we think we're able to coexist and not have to go through that expense. Okay. Um, so I know you talked about the septic system earlier. I just noticed in the application it referenced that this, the cost, I think, was more expensive in all tech septic system so I just didn't know what that was or what that reference was is it like a traditional septic system I, I think that I, where is that reference it was in the let me see the application just reference you know when you go through the cost it says unusual site conditions other site work budgeted 150,000 it says alt tech septic systems there may be a reference to like an enhanced uh, denitrifying yes. system or something which we're not proposing okay Any proposed like student bus stop, do you think that's necessary for this project? We did talk about that. Um, and we th the applicant is uh, open to that. We haven't talked about details. Um, I, I think we can address that and perhaps show something if it makes sense near the entrance and it's safe. Um, it was discussed at that interdepartment meeting. We just haven't had an opportunity to think it through yet. Okay. And I guess, um, let me see if I have any other questions 
for you. I think I have. I think those were all my questions for you. I do have some other okay. questions. Thank you. Um, and you referenced earlier that there will be a pro like an on-site, not an on-site, but a property manager that will be retained? Oh, it'll be a management company. Okay. They won't be with only 20 units. We won't do like some of the larger developments I represented where we have one of the units dedicated to an on-site right. property manager. But you will be retaining like a third-party management company? We will. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, will there be decks on all units? I know that that was The, the decks, we're discussing patios. Okay. To keep the lot coverage down as opposed to a deck. And it would be on all units? All units. Okay. Would, each one would have an individual. Okay. Um, I know this was also, I think, in the engineering proposal, just a question regarding visitable units. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have um, and the units set up as handicap accessible. These are small units. If you look at the square footage, yeah. they're 715, 823. Uh, we're not required to have one because we're 20 units. It's once you go over 20 units required to have a handicap accessible ADA unit. Okay. So we could certainly, if somebody needed it, uh, widen parking spaces, uh, you know, we'll still be retaining ownership of it and overall responsibility for it. So if somebody required a handicap spot, we could certainly create that. Because okay. you can see there's plenty of space between, you know, between here and here, each of these, uh, so we create a wider space. Okay. And then TJ, right before we took our break, asked about screening, and I know you said there's going to be a fence, I guess, on the western property side. Yeah. Could you look into putting some plantings on that side? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I think the plan is where we do have a fence, well. there will be plantings in addition yes. to a fence. Yes, in addition to the fence. I think just because there it, there is buffering, obviously, in the the other sides, and I think not that this is a question, but I'll opine very quickly that it would be nice to have some additional screening on that side. Oh, and we're agreeable to that. Okay. Thank you. Um, that was all I had. Okay. Uh, Kim asked a lot of the questions that I was thinking about. Um, okay. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, so I guess the monitoring agent, do you have the monitoring agent? <coughs> Not at present. We've been in discussion with a few different agencies, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a second meeting here. We'll, yeah. we'll have an, a, an agreement okay. with somebody. Yeah, because we'd like to concern. have that kind of pinned down. <laughs> so I'll put to be determined. And you've indicated which the affordable units are. Um, I know that's a concern uh, recently with shifting them back and forth so we've designated them as permanently do designated do so your new plans uh are they going to show the location of the of the lamps the lighting it, yes the, the new plan will show them coming up here and then there'll be post lamps right the front of each uh, they do show on the landscape plan actually okay now that landscape, is that the actual landscape plan? No, that was the one that was prepared by another right. landscape agency um, and they have not given us a new one based upon the new plan. So we'll get some uh, little beefed up landscape yes, plan. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, any sidewalks anywhere here? There's no sidewalks on the driveway. There are sidewalks in front of each of the units mm -hmm. coming out of the parking, but there aren't. Uh, on the common driveway. I'm just thinking if, if you have people walking to the bus stop, whether it would be, I know it's tight there, and that, but whether there's room to put anything along the walk out to the road. Okay, we can look at that. Okay. Uh, there was a question in engineering about soil testing in the detention areas. So subsequent to the original uh, meeting with the departments, we've done te uh, soil testing. Um, and we did test holes and perk tests for the septic design. But because it's wooded, we only got in just at the beginning. And this is the outwash plane. This is glacially. It's, nothing's changing between here and here. Mm -hmm. You take down about three or four feet and you're into coarse sand 
forever. So drainage seems good. But we will, once, if this is, this proceeds, we will do confirm, confirmation testing when the site's open. If it's approved, we'll we do additional test holes. Okay. Uh, the other question I guess I had was, there is a natural landscape buffer there. Uh, what's keeping the homeowners from clearing beyond, or the renters from doing any clearing? The renters don't own the property. <coughs> right. So they're not going to be permitted to take down any additional so trees or anything else. So that explicitly stated in their rental agreements or yep. something? We can insert a clause in there, yeah. Okay. But they don't own the property. Right. Okay. Uh, I think that does it for me at the moment, and probably for the board. Is the board happy at this point? Yes. Uh, yeah. So why don't we open it up and see if the public has Concerns or comments or, or questions? Anybody <coughs> out there want to speak? Sir, well, I ask you go go to the podium. State your name for the record as we discussed. Oh, yeah. Outside oh, yeah. the room. Excuse me, excuse me. Tom Pucci, uh, 23 Jamie Lane. Um, do we know what the distance is between this building and here? This, you know, I live there and I know what this piece of property, this doesn't look like it actually fits in there, but I'm sure it does. But what's the distance between these buildings and the fence you're going to put in front of my house? It shows right there, Tom. I'm sorry. That house specifically has a setback right there. I believe it's 40 feet. Okay, thank you. Um, so so let's say, state what that is. Just 45, 45 feet. 45 feet. 45 feet. Okay. 45 feet. Um, how long do we think this project's going to take to finish? Address your questions through the board. Please. Can you, can you um, tell me how long you think this project is going to take beginning to end? Okay, so how long will it take to construct this? Right. Project? And any other questions? Because we'll, we'll then we'll yep. ask the applicant to And And I, I know you talked in saying that the other, um, the other uh, plan on the other side of the landscaping, I noticed on the east side there's a lot of trees. On the west side is just a fence. Is it possible to have trees on both sides? So Kim actually <coughs> asked that question well, uh, she, about yeah, getting kinda. some additional landscaping. And, 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 and I just was, wanted to be clear that that landscaping, you'd can like we to talk about that. trees? I mean, very selfishly. I mean, part of the reason I bought that land is because I love the people on Sophia, but we don't have to look at them. Right. right. I, I do love them. but. And a fence is a fence, and I hope it's a fence that's going to last a long time because I don't want to see this breaking up, and then yeah. nobody's going to fix it. So I want a good fence there. I well, mean, I don't want the responsibility of the property owner, which well, is the you know. I know, the and I also understand that sometimes when things go up, then after that it's a different story. Yeah. So I just you know, boy, if that could be um, you know one of these polycarbonate, I don't know what they call them, but the fences that won't go away. You know, nice plastic fences that aren't going to fall apart. That would be exceptional. And I would like to see trees, just because I don't want to look into somebody's okay. backyard. I think we get, we get okay. the picture. So we'll, we'll uh, take that into consideration. Uh, who else? Yes, sir. Uh, Russ, Russ Stevens, 18 Sophie Lane. Um, so I guess my understanding, I'm 99% sure, North Star is going to retain ownership of all these properties. What's the vetting process like for tenants? Credit checks, background checks, um, I'd just like to hear some explanation of that. Pets, dogs, pit bulls, stuff like that. What is the standard North Star policy on vetting tenants? Who's going to be living? 20 feet from my house, basically. Um, it sounded like I had a question earlier, and I think um, I, I think I got that the units are going to be. I'm sure it's on here. I just have, this is the first time I've seen it. How big the, how many bedrooms are going to be in each unit? Whether these are going to be targeted to families, to single people, um, 
just more information, yeah, I guess. There were 16 uh, two-bedroom units and three, uh, four uh, three-bedroom units is what the testimony was. Okay. And, um, yeah, I guess that would be my primary concern to sort of what What's the type process of for choosing the test? Right. Okay. Exactly. We'll see if we can get, do you want to address that, Steve? Uh, not yet, actually. You know, the idea here is to provide much needed affordable housing, and there will be some families here, but they're two and three bedroom units. I mean, there'll be some bedding, obviously, if there's criminal records or other things like that. That's something that'll be looked at. But we're not, we're only at the beginning process here. We're not looking at down the road at the vetting. But there'll be somebody who will be doing the leasing, follow us a management company and everything else, and that, that'll be their responsibility as part of their uh, management contract. And will you be setting any standards for them? I mean, the, the monitoring agent, of course, there's a process there. Right. Yeah, and that, we, that's why we're interviewing a couple different companies. We're trying to keep it local, but we'll use basically their standard practices. Okay. There's, a, right. cri there's a criteria at an income level right. that has to meet the 80% of the Barnesville County median income. Right. So that, that's... You know, yeah, and the, the last ones are out in 2016. And that's why they monitor to make sure they meet that income right. level. For the five affordable units. For the five Correct. affordable units. The other units are market rates. Right. So exactly. this will be, uh, there'll be a mixed population. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm Jane Toby. I live at 5 Wendelia Circle, which is across the street from the development. I do home daycare in my house. I'm licensed through the state to do that. And a big concern, as our other neighbors that I'm speaking for as well, was, you know, the criteria of the people moving in. Are we doing, like, Section 8 housing and going to end up, like, Homestead and parts of Jamie Lane? And then I'm, you know, I've got children in my house. I've got to keep my eyes on all windows as I'm watching my kids. So it is a concern of mine. Um, another concern, um, this circle at the end, I heard you saying, or whoever said that there's going to be something there. I'm on Windelia Circle. We, too, have a circle like that at the end. We did have landscaping there. And one of the neighbors noticed that there was a drug dealer that would come there daily. And the other people would meet him there behind there because nobody could see. So I didn't know how open that would be. So that doesn't happen right across the street. And like, is there a stop sign at the end of that going to Brick Kiln Road for the Sorry. people in there, like a light or a stop sign or anything like that? Um, and I have another, I guess, kind of a question um, directed to Steve. In the hallway, he asked where I lived. And I told him, and he said, don't worry, you won't see it. So if it's such a great development, why is it a concern if, if I don't see it? I don't understand that. <laughs> well, people like to see woods. I think that's what he's trying to say. But, yeah. OK, but so let's, uh, the signage question is certainly one that is uh, worth addressing. The only sign we could put it would be probably a, a man-made stop sign at the end, because this is a common driveway. It's not a road. So but we could create a sign mm -hmm. just as they have not other smaller subdivisions and condominium developments that has a stop at the end. Yeah. They, there will be landscaping on the cul-de-sac island, but it's very low level. Mm -hmm. And you could, as the landscape plan shows, there are lights on the cul right on there. So it's not dark. It's not hidden. There are, there are lampposts within that interior of the cul-de-sac. OK, so yeah, and the lighting certainly can address some of the security concerns. People. Absolutely. Um, someone else had a question. Uh, McCain Kessel, 11 Winley Circle. This is kind of probably a little bit unusual, but I'm wondering if the developer would have any objection to making these apartments smoke free. Okay, we can certainly ask that. Smoke We haven't looked at it, but I'm not sure somebody smoking cigarettes is going to bother anybody on Wendelia. But it's something they can look at. But these are people who are in need of housing, and we're trying to provide housing for people who are in need. And if somebody smokes, 
you know, we can look at that, but I don't think we're going to make a smoke free development. Smoking's the right if somebody chooses to do it. Yep. I'm Lori Wiesman. I live on Sophie Lane. Um, Jane did ask the question, but I didn't hear that it was answered. I do know there's a need in Falmouth for affordable housing, and I know there's a difference between affordable housing and Section 8 housing. Will any of these units be actually Section 8 housing? No. Okay. okay. Thank you. If, if I can, yep. anybody who's coming in who's going to qualify for these has to have the income levels and jobs and everything else in order to pay the rent. They're, they're not subsidized other than the reduced rent. So these are all people who are credit worthy enough, have jobs, and earn an income. Yeah, so in the, in the materials submitted, it's, uh, I just noticed that 50% of the median for a four family, four person family is uh, currently is $45,100. $45, yeah. Uh, you're proposing 80% that qualifies for affordable. Right. The original letter that we got from Mass Housing for the site approval had four units at 50%. And we had never discussed that. We had always discussed five units at 80%. And so there's an amendment to their letter uh, that was filed with the package that changed it. So you, the town gets one more affordable unit, but the rents are at not more than 80%. A little bit higher. And I didn't answer Jane's question. That's what I was referring to, Jane, is the fact that it's so far back, and that I probably kept them as ranches too, so that it's not visible to everybody. It's not overmassing people who live on Sophie Lane or live on Jamie Lane. That's why we kept them as ranches. And it's so far back, and that's why the road turns here, so that. Do you have an elevation? Um, Mike has elevation on you. No, the building elevation. Oh, building elevation. Yes, I do. Show what these things look like. As I say, they're all ranch style. So they're all one, one level. One story. All one story. The surrounding properties are mostly ranches and capes, and we did them all as ranches to be consistent. And do you happen to know the building height? Um, I can get it, but I thought I had it. Okay, uh, other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, again, Mc McCain Castle, 11 Winley's, Winley's Circle. Uh, my issue was not whether or not I could smell the smoke from where I live. Uh, the issue is that we've had a lot of problems with drugs and alcohols on Homestead Lane, some on Jamie Lane. A lot of uh, new apartment dwellings are going smoke free and it was my feeling that if, if in fact that this was a smoke free complex perhaps we'd be less likely and the police would be less likely to have some of the problems have fewer problems there than what we currently have on homestead lane wasn't whether or not i, I could smell it it was just i'm concerned that uh, okay. well i you know, we have I, good family people in there i i i, I, I hear your concern i think uh Steve addressed that, uh, you know, they also have to worry about the marketability and uh, as of today, people can still smoke cigarettes. Okay, well, one more thing, um, Steve, uh, just so you know, uh, 23 and the next couple of houses are all raised ranches. So our patios, are, I mean, our decks are up. So again, a good reason to have some tree screening rather than, you know, I can't look through the fence, but when I'm on my deck, I'm looking down, you know, so ranch or not, I will see down, and I'd rather not if I don't have to. Okay, any more questions from the public at this time? Okay, if not, uh, I have a question. Yep. Um, I really want to know if the land will be cleared. I'm sorry, could we have your name, please? Tina Williams. I'm Ricardo Lima. Live on 19 Jamie Lane. Okay. If the land will be cleared 
fully from the driveway forward or back, I so, should say. So how much clearing will occur? I mean, we're obviously a butters and... Yeah, we're butters. We actually had a chicken coop out there. We actually had over 20 years out there. Now they're saying it's 10 foot from the property line to the back, and the back of the chicken coops are 20 foot. Yeah, we're one of the chicken coops that, that, that he had mentioned. For years. Yeah, which is about 20 feet back, we believe, but it's been there. I've lived there 32 years. Okay, well, we can't. Uh, but that wasn't my question. Yeah. My question was the property being cleared, if you stand in my backyard and you look, there's trees 20 feet high with vines growing on them that are absolutely beautiful. Um, we have birds, we have wildlife, all kinds of wildlife. Amazing. I mean, there's owls and, you know, foxes and all kinds of stuff. And if, if it's cleared completely, I have a concern with that. Right. And I'm just curious, beyond that beginning, which I know Can we can't Can you point on the clear. plan where you're most concerned about the clearing? Oh, no, I'm concerned about the entire the woods okay. being cleared right. for into our backyards that there's going to be a fence and nothing, you know, no more like Tom said. And where, where are you located? Are you? We, we're neighbors of Tom's. We're actually, um, right here. Yeah. Okay. And we're just showing the shed, the encroachment of the shed. This is actually the chicken coop right here. This is our back shed. Yeah, I don't think the shed encroaches, but the, okay. the chicken coop is, has been back there for years. Yeah. And I mean, it's behind our wood, right behind our woods line, so it's perfect, so we can't see it. Right. I mean, got an to owl move box, it. We set up the owl. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I yeah, sympathize. Wildlife. I don't know what would happen to we all the wildlife. Set, we got set up I know that happened with Winley back when they were going to build over there. Yeah. But I mean, we have <laughs> foxes and yeah. coyotes and okay. all kinds yeah, of. Kind of wildlife. And I'm just thinking if the entire property is cleared out, where are all the bird nests and. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious if somebody can answer if it's just going to. We'll ask just the applicant to, to talk. I, I will say that we've 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 raised the issue of <laughs> adequate landscape buffer. And right. There's concern about doing that and making sure there's a fence proposed, I guess, along that boundary. Yeah. Uh, so that will clearly delineate where the property, your property, begins and yep. theirs ends. Right. Uh, but I'm talking that, about some pre-existing stuff versus, right. you know, I, even on the other side, if you walk it back there, which we do all the time, but if you walk back there on the Sophie side, <coughs> there's, the everybody has a fence, so right. there's really nothing, you know, there's no bushes growing there or anything like they show in the pictures. Right. Um, but we have, you know, actual landscape, not like natural landscape. It is not something we did. I understand. So I was just curious if somebody, whoever. Well, maybe Steve can address how much that. clearing they have to do in order to construct uh, Thank you. Thank you. these sure. this project. The applicant intends to keep as many of the mature trees as possible. I mean, they take take a while to grow. The only ones that are going to come down are the ones that are absolutely necessary in order to do the development along the perimeter. Uh, with respect, and I appreciate. Uh, Ms. Williams, in fact, that they have the chicken coop and everything else, but it's not their land. They're using somebody else's land. As a matter of fact, since there is that temple right away, anybody on this side of Jamie Lane isn't permitted to put any structures of any kind within that right away. That right away is supposed to stay open uh, for access to that other development. So it's very easy that they could take the shed and the chicken coop and move them back onto their own property, and we'd sort of uh, go to ask them to do that. But we will maintain as many of the mature trees as we can. Uh, to keep a buffer for both the abutting properties and a, a buffer for our own tenants. Okay. All right, last, we're getting to the end. People are starting to repeat, so uh, let's. Uh. Russ Stevens again, uh, Sophie Lane. I, I guess so, this is my first go around in town like a meeting like this. So, and I. I think a lot of us are saying the same type of stuff, and I keep hearing from North Star and their representation that this is about building low-income housing for people that need it, which I dispute. I think this is more about capitalism than altruism, right? They're out here to make money. 
And that's why they're putting the low-income housing there, because they can build more units. And I, I guess my concern that I don't really feel is being addressed, and maybe it will never be addressed, and it's tough shit uh, for all of us. Wow. But will there be, I, I guess, will there be a set of parameters laid out prior to this being approved and going forward about, and will we know exactly what the vetting process is for tenants, exactly what the rent, proposed rent for each one of these units is? Um, and the answer may be no. The answer may be once it goes through. I think we will we know what the rent is, for sure. Sure. Uh, you know, that it's a, it's a free country. People have a right to, uh, to rent these properties if they can afford to pay the rent. Sure. No, I'm, I'm not uh, saying that all these. In terms of the, in terms of the density, uh, the state law permits this kind of density if you provide affordable housing, and it allows uh, developers to come in and request waivers from our zoning. Mm -hmm. Under existing zoning, what is allowed in in this agri agricultural B land would have been three units, but because they're providing uh, five affordable units defined as 80, exactly. you know, rent at 80% of the, uh, one third of 80% of the median income for the county, uh, they can have higher density. Sure. The point was raised, and I think it was a good one, that the density proposed here is still below what we would allow in multifamily housing districts, which would be six units per acre. So uh, we've certainly seen denser projects come in under the 40B. Uh, regulations. Sure. Um, so you know, that that's sort of the context for it. Kim, you wanted to make a well, remark? Well, yeah, I think that you just kind of remarked on some of what I was going to say, but in Falmouth, and I, we have this presumption that there's a st at the state level, there's a presumption that we have a need for affordable housing. Um, we have about, I think, si what's the, Six what are we point at? 6.6 6 right, 6 right, right now. The percent um, of our total housing stock meets that's the required. affordability requirement. Uh, regulations, which is, as, as I said, it's that one-third of 80 percent of the median. Right. And so you, if you're under 10 percent, then there's a presumption that we need, Falmouth as a community, needs to create affordable housing. So that's the trade-off here. That's why developers get to come in. They do make a profit, and, and the law, you know, recognizes that they make a profit. We're not saying this isn't a profit-making venture, but it is limited. Um, and they are creating affordable housing, so that's the trade-off. That's why they got some waivers from the zoning bylaw. Um, I think I would just say personally, um, I, I think it is a little offensive to say, you know, is this Section 8 housing? Do we have to keep our, our eye out the window? These people are people who deserve housing. They're hardworking. A lot of people have are teachers, people like that. It's, they're no different from the people who could buy a property next door to your house. So this, I understand your concern about vetting, um, things, things like that, wanting to make sure people have background checks. I certainly understand that. But this notion that it's unique to this property because they're creating affordable housing, I think is, is really contrary to 40B in this notion that against anti-snob zoning, which is the whole purpose of creating affordable housing. So that's just my two cents on that. And, I mean, I, I think that we, there's a recognized need in Falmouth. I think based on projects that we've seen, this is sensitive to, to the community. I'm not saying it's a perfect project. I'm not saying, you know, you next to a neighbor, there's a multifamily development coming in. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not something to be concerned about. But this notion that there's police activity on Homestead Lane, all of a sudden there could be police activity here because it's an affordable housing community, I don't think is really fair to, to put on this developer. Well, the other thing I think is important to remember is five of these units are affordable. The other 15 are market rate units. Uh, I think I, I and all the rest of us all understand that capitalism is what's, you know, yeah. and on all that stuff. I get it. But I think if you guys had land that abutted this, you would have similar concerns. Absolutely. Right? right. All you got to do is go to the Cumberland Farms near Davisville and see Gosnell Grove sitting right there and not want that right behind your house, it's totally right? different. I mean, that's it's not snobby, house. that's not, you it's know. Totally it's totally different, it's not a 40 B. Right, but listen, that's our, well, this is a neighborhood, like we said, we keep talking about Homestead Lane, we, we see our neighborhood in the police bother quite a bit, right? On the Falmouth Enterprise. So that's where I think these concerns are coming from. 
right? We all have a great deal of money invested in our properties. There are primary residences, investment properties. Like, so that's why we're just trying to get answers on this. I mean, it matters to us. No, I, 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 I'm, I think the board is, is sympathetic to that. I, right. I do. I think we're trying to find a balance between, first of all, what we are obligated to do under the law, which is that, you know, if the 40B comes to us and meets the criteria, they can request waivers. We weigh those waivers. In this case, they're really only asking for a few waivers. Uh, a higher density, which is still within the density allowed in multifamily in the town, uh, the ability to put that multifamily in an agricultural B district. Uh, those are really the only two significant waivers being requested here. Um, they have significant setbacks. They, you know, uh, have, have, we've raised issues with making sure there's adequate buffer and landscaping, so I think we can try to protect as best as possible uh, the, the views for, for the abutters. Uh, but in the end, you know, the, this is their property. They have acquired it, and they are entitled under the law to ask for uh, this type of development. And if we get to 10% uh, affordable housing in the town of Falmouth, uh, then uh, it will no longer be possible for 40B developers to come in and ask for mm, this that's sort of thing. That's, right. that's, that's, that's not question. true. That's not question. Um, I, I just suggest any of, any of you people who don't understand what a 40B is, you can certainly come into the office and I will be more than happy to explain it to you. But also go on to the Zoning Board website. On there I keep a list of all the 40B projects from 1989, I think. Don't hesitate to drive by them. The ones that are rentals are marked with asterisks. You will not be able to tell that these are affordable and they're certainly not, um, you can't tell the difference is what I'm saying. So do that or I have a list in the office. Feel free, go buy them, drive down them. There's several of them in this town. Not 10%, mind you, but several. Right. And they're designated which ones are rentals and which one are sales. Don't hesitate to drive by them or ask questions of the office. Very few people have come in to review these plans so if you have any questions, yeah. that's well, what we're there for. you're encouraged to come in to the zoning office and four. look at the plans. And there'll be revised plans, it looks like, uh, that yes. will have more detail on, on uh, exactly how the landscaping is going to work and so forth. Yeah. Um, that's a list that we need to go over. OK. I have a question. I thought you had a question. Oh, I thought you had a question. Uh, I have a question for Steve. It's going to be a long drive to New Jersey. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we public's had a nice opportunity to comment on this. Uh, it's likely we're going to continue this, uh, but Kim has a question at the moment, so let's yeah. go to her. Um, I just had a question. There was a question re raised by Russ Stevens regarding pets being allowed on the property. Will they be allowed? We haven't really fully uh, looked at that yet, but okay. if there is, it'll be uh, a limitation on the pets um, and small pets. You know, small dogs, small cats, something like that. Hamsters? <laughs> Hamsters get loud. Okay. One, one question to just, and we hadn't discussed this, is we are, the developer is entitled to make a profit. But remember, since this is a 40B, it's just limitations on the profit. Mm -hmm. They're only allowed to make a certain amount of money. And they just want to make people know this is not a grandiose thing where we're going to make all kinds of money. There's limitations set by <coughs> statute. Right. Thank you. So you want to go over the list of what you anticipate at the next hearing? Uh, TJ has a, a question. Oh, excuse I, me. I think this question was raised by Mr. Bucci and it uh, wasn't addressed. Uh, the construction timeline, or are you uh, proposing this to be in different phases or all at once? All at once. Um, and we expect it to be within a year from start to finish. Okay. Construction with, completed within a year. Is that... You willing to condition that? Well, it, it deals with <laughs> weather as well. <laughs> no, no. There's a question. In other words, we'll be building them as we go and, and renting them. All 10 duplexes are not going to be under construction at the same time. Yeah, but we've seen some projects where they build a few and then they try to get enough money to build the rest of them. And Those are usually sales. Th this is. 
As we said, that's usually sales. What we'll do here is we'll have construction financing uh, with a takeout loan, probably from Mass Housing after. At the end, once everything is completed, um, then Mass Housing will take out a commercial lender. Okay. That's, that's the anticipated plan. Okay, so um, I think we, we are waiting for some additional, obviously, information on revised plans. Mm -hmm. um, Monitoring Doom. agent. Mm -hmm. Monitoring agent. Landscape. Landscape. Revised site plan, similar to what they have there. Mm -hmm. Removing the play area, uh, bus stop, stop signs. Sidewalk, Light. if possible. Possible, they're going to come back to the board about the right. sidewalk. Yep. Uh, the lamp posts. Clear uh, lighting, right. I think. And it, they said if they'd possible, we like to get a schematic, if you will, of the light posts, what type of lumen, how much, what the lumen is, the low level lighting, if that's feasible, please. And the mailboxes, what they're going to look like, where they're going to be, the landscaping between the driveways. Anything more on the dumpsters? I think the dumpsters are made pretty clear. Okay. Uh, patios, you said, so that would be Where's nice to show is? those. And the fence. Maybe uh, what kind of fence that was raised. Contrary to belief, those plastic vinyl fences do require cleaning constantly, and they do come apart at the brackets, like just like the uh, stockade, stockade fence. So. Yeah. I mean, the presumption is that there'll be a management company, and if there's a problem, right. Uh, Will be taken and that care should of. be dealt with. You know, the, I, I don't think that the, tenant, the, the tenants on the property are going to want their fence falling down either. Um, one question is on the management. Are they going to oversee the rentals themselves or just the maintenance? So possibly some type of uh, verbiage as to what they anticipate that management company and any type of security measures that they're taking. Do we know anything about the market rate? Uh, That's something that they proposed? can answer and give a synopsis of. Yes. I, I don't think, given the location, that these will actually rent for what the rent levels are uh, that are posted. But these are from 1986. And the rental rates for a two-bedroom at 80% every medium income is $1,321 a month. A market rate rental is $1,550 for a two-bedroom. The 80% AMI for a three-bedroom is $1,527. And the actual market rent in Falmouth is probably $1,450. So I think the rents will actually be less than what the posted levels are through HUD. But that's, that's what's posted by HUD, and I have a copy of HUD levels for rental income and what they suggest, which we can provide the board. But I think given uh, the location, they'll probably run for less than that. And North Star LLC retains ownership. Is that the plan? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, what else would the board like going forward to see? Anything? No, I think if that, that covers everything. Yeah, it covers it. I did yeah. just want to say, not to step on your toes, but as Sari said, the office is open. We're still receiving public comments, so if people out there have comments or questions, or we concerns. still have an opportunity to get those answered and, and address those with the right. developer. Feel free to send us letters. Yes. Okay. So, so motion to continue? Yeah, until when <coughs> is the question. Do you have any thoughts on that, Ken? Because the well, court Suri is usually is the helper on that. A busy night. How long is it going to take to get the drawings up to you? Well, our next hearing isn't until September 14th, and they're working on the drawings now, so I anticipate that everything would be able to be submitted a week in advance, the things that we're discussing tonight. Um, the question to the board is, do you want to do it the 14th or the 28th, looking at what you've got? The yeah, I'm just looking at what we're dealing with. Two so major appeals. So a brewery with retail sales demo. Okay, let's not advertise. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I suggest you do it the 14th. Thank you, Sari. That's yes. what I'm looking for. Because okay. the 28th 
is going to be a lively Okay, so night. motion Everyone's to continue here. Yeah, yeah. to September 14th then. I will move to continue this hearing to September 14th, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. here in Town Hall. Second it. Okay. Is that okay? Can you guys make that? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we will continue this until then, and obviously you're welcome to come come back then. Nine five eight three zero six zero. Which one? Okay, so three zero six zero. It's a five. All right, let's see. What else is on our agenda? One five zero six. Because I keep um, yeah. I keep getting well, well, emails. Do, the meeting is continuing, <laughs> I so. Know. Please, uh, if you want to talk, just back. do so she, she's out in the hall. And I just went. Hello. Oh, yeah. I was gone. She went into it. No, I, I, I spaced out. I thought, like, we continued it. Like, no, it was good. You were just doing good. We, just, we, 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 we would we ask that you out. Was like this. exit, please, to All the guys were outside. Steve was outside. Yeah. And I kind of started of walking back in with that. Just leave us alone. I come back. That's hilarious. In theory, could have left. Um, because you were here, so someone could have sat up, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I think they just get worried. They get worried if they get sick of all over in general. And this one, we can release it. So, minutes of August 10th. I'm telling you, this is probably like, hello. I need to recuse on those. So you still have any people. Okay. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, then we need a motion to approve. Um, which ones are you approving? Which set yeah. for August so let's, 10th? Let's, we have regular and executive. Let's start with the regular, huh? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to approve the regular minutes for August 10th, 2017. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I um, abstain. And uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to make the motion to approve the executive minutes for August 10th, 2017, but uh, not to yeah. release, release the minutes. Okay, because we were in executive session. And so because it's ongoing litigation. Ongoing litigation, and therefore, uh, and let's see, so we've got a motion by TJ, is there a second? Oh, second. TJ and Ed, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I Abstain. Now there is one oh, set of minutes. I minute. abstain too. I abstain too. Oh. Yes, two abstentions. Mm -hmm. There is another set of executive session minutes that I'm asking the board to release to the public. You have approved them previously. All litigation, I believe, to win one and win two is over. So if you could release those minutes now. Wow. Okay. Someone and want to make that motion? They're the date. TJ will give you the date. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make the motion to approve the... Release. Oh, I'm sorry. Release the minutes for executive session held on March 9th, 2017. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. TJ and Ed. Everybody on board with that? Yes. yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 And aye. And Rob will abstain because he was not in attendance. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does that take care of the minutes? It does. Thank you. Uh, so then board review to discuss procedural rules and policies. I'm going uh, to continue that or table that. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, here is your letter. Mr. Oh, yes. Which you could do under board discussion. Thanks. If you want to post this. I only did four of these. All right. Two, three, four. Okay, and then this is a decision that uh, was recently rendered in the courts, which the attorneys may have more opinions on than I do. But you can't discuss the project. Right. So, no, but that, with that project has nothing to do with us. It merely demonstrates that it's possible for the act to be overturned. So I did draft a letter to the Board of Selectmen, which I think you've all had a chance to see, but now you have a paper copy, because I felt it was important to uh, kind of bring them up to speed as to the decision we made and the possibility 
that this will be appealed, which it has been, to the Housing Appeals Committee. And then if, depending on the decision of the Housing Appeals Committee, get them thinking about what the next step might be. And so if any of you have comments or thoughts, i uh, be happy to hear them and we could modify the letter. Um, I reviewed this earlier this week because <coughs> Suri had sent it around. I think it was great. I think it was a great idea to send something to the Board of Selectmen um, regarding our position and some of the reasons for our vote. And I thought it was well written. So I liked it. I'll yeah, second that. Yeah, I'll second that. That was well done. I like it. I say send it. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, that's yeah. all, all we needed to establish was that everyone's on board with sending this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's correspondence, I guess. Great. Uh, any future agenda items? I don't think so. Hearing no future. Oh, did I, can I just ask even though, um, did anybody go on Tuesday to that? Lots of people went, but not me. Not me. Yeah. Well, that bylaw yeah. review, was it good and helpful? And good. It was a good start to the, the discussion, discussion of the bylaw review. Yeah. Reviewed uh, definitions and uh, Bob, who was the consultant for the bylaws, laid out the timeline in terms of uh, everything that he plans to get done. How long's the timeline, is it? It's about a year, about a year, year and a half, yeah. depending on how quickly they can get everything year, right? together. Yeah, yeah. To get through the entire bylaws? Yeah. Yeah, it seems pretty reasonable. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. All right. Thank you, All right, this is, there's no further business, we can adjourn. Right. Meeting adjourned. Is that speedier? Oh, I felt bad because I said that.